sex as a part of life. I made slut pop specifically because I felt like that shouldn't be shameful. I don't ever want you to be ashamed of anything because you're fabulous. What's up? I'm Kim Petrus and this is Growing Up Pop. I grew up two hours outside of Cologne, Germany. I think our nearest neighbor was like a 20 minute walk. I lived there with my mom and my two older sisters. First memories as a child, singing and harmonizing with my sisters. Um, my mom's super into singing. My dad's really into free jazz and he plays like six instruments. Music at our house was always a big thing that kind of connected us all. Like whenever we would be together, there would, there would always be music on. I was very much like the pop girl and my older sister's super into heavy metal and my other sister's super into like emo. That definitely just like set me on the way to become a songwriter. So I was shy and timid and I was kind of like the kid that didn't really speak the nature of me knowing super early on that I'm transgender. Feeling, you know, kind of outcast because I didn't really know any other kids uh, that were going through that thing. So I was very in my head. At home I would like just always be raiding my sister's closet and throwing on crazy outfits. My mom was always like, if you still feel like this when you're old enough to do something about this, then I'm going to help you find people to do that. And that's what she did. A really toxic thing that people think about being transgender. Like you wake up one day and you're like, oh no, I'm a girl. That's just not at all how it is. It was just like always how I felt. I was very, um, honestly, like, suicidal very early on. I did this documentary and it was like, uh, I was 12 years old and it was like from Tim to Kim, like from boy to girl, like totally like dead naming and uh, just really insensitive. And I, in Germany, kind of became a joke as a 12 year old, like on TV. Anywhere I would go, I would just be like transgender girl or someone would yell tranny at me or people would throw their lunch at me or like I would get beat up. From that moment on, I was kind of not willing to like go outside and just completely hid in my room and made music. And I was like, one day all of y'all are gonna regret this and all of you are regretting it. <laughs> I started writing songs at 12. I would just make demos all the time, I would post them. I always kind of had this drive of like, I, every day I'm gonna get up and write a song, no matter if I hate it tomorrow or not, but I'm gonna make a song every single day. I was obsessed with the Spice Girls and was obsessed with Britney and Madonna and Cher. That kind of became my own little religion. I spent most of my time just like in my room dancing in the mirror, listening to music, and pretending like these girls were my friends. Emotions and songs kind of connected me to uh, everyone else, and it was like, I have feelings just like everyone else. It didn't really occur to me like what gender identity these people have, you know? I was just like, I love this music, and I sh think she's fierce, and that's it. <laughs> I was like 14, and I just started getting out there and performing. When I started performing in gay clubs, I felt like that was like the only space where I felt accepted and where I could be myself and where I could listen to the music I was listening to without getting judged. I decided to move to LA and really go for it at 19. Uh, I came out here by myself. No one in my family's ever even been to America. So uh, yeah, they were definitely a little scared, but for me it was just like, I need to make this happen. I stayed in a garage of a producer who I barely knew and uh, started just writing every single day. I had a completely new, fresh start. No one knew anything about me. And I got a publishing deal here, which was really important because like that, I could afford my visa. And I met this uh, amazing producer, uh, Aaron Joseph, who I did all of my songs in the beginning with. It was a few years of making songs before I ever released anything, before I ever released I Don't Want It At All. My music was really good, like no one could say shit about my music, but everyone was just like concerned of how to market me. There were all these questions in all of these meetings about being transgender and it should have just been about the music. When I started performing in New York, it, everything changed. People started hearing about it and it started streaming good on Spotify. All of that stuff just kind of simultaneously happened while I was still kind of playing in clubs for like 20 people. And then I went to 100 people, and then I went to 1,000 people, and then eventually 10,000. I never really thought that my point of view would connect with so many people who can relate to like a trans person talking about their issues, you know? But I guess music can, can really 
do that. Sam reached out very early in my career and was like, I love you and I want to make a song with you. The Unholy came around and Sam insta DM'd it to me and I was kind of instantly like, yep, yeah, that's the one because it was just special. I went in and freestyled most of the verse. And then Sam was just like, that's it. We finessed some of the lyrics, but Sam was really like, no, you need to talk about fashion and you need to be yourself because that's why no one else can do it. And I just felt so supported in that moment and seen. <laughs> it's been my dream to have a number one in the US. So it feels like a freak accident, a little bit, but it's a lot of years of really hard work until I was in the right place for that to happen. Since the beginning of this year, I've been making so much music with so many amazing, talented people, which I'm so excited to share. My next single is uh, called If Jesus Was a Rockstar. It's with Max Martin. It's my first Max Martin song. It's a song about religion and my struggles with it. I want to be in the same category as everyone else as an artist and get judged exactly the same and is my music good is the only thing that matters. Do I talk about being transgender in interviews and stuff like that or then does everything come about me being transgender? Does the trans community not feel like I'm talking about it enough? Things like that are difficult but we're figuring it out. I just always want to make people feel good about themselves with my music. From my community and the artists before me I just want to represent them and uh, make them proud. Thanks for listening to my story and I'll catch you later Billboard. Woo! Oh.